Joining us now is the lawmaker you heard from just there, Texas Republican Congressman and ranking member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Michael McCall. He's also a senior member of the House Homeland Security Committee. Congressman, welcome. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me. We're going to show our audience video you shot yourself during your visit, uh, your tour of a Donna, Texas facility Friday. You're a border, border state lawmaker, so you have plenty of experience with the issue of illegal immigration. How bad was what you saw during this latest visit to our southern border? Well, Mike, I was a federal prosecutor here in Texas, had the border mm -hmm. in my jurisdiction. I chaired the Homeland Security Committee for six years until I term limited. Now I'm the uh, lead Republican on Foreign Affairs Committee. This is the worst I've ever seen the border. This is the biggest border crisis of my career, my lifetime. It's like a trail of tears to see these children being, you know, marched up from the river to a processing center, then put in the Donna detention facility. A five-year-old girl in tears, not knowing where she is, not with her parents or her family. It is one of the saddest things. And the, and the saddest thing of all is it could have been prevented. The Biden administration, through the stroke of a pen, reversed the asylum agreements that President Trump negotiated and the Remain in Mexico policy that I listen to Border Patrol, not politicians. They tell me there's a direct cause and effect between that reversal and the crisis that we're seeing today. Do you have any confidence the Biden administration will change course, change tactics to get a handle on the situation at our southern border? Well, it'd be great if the president and the vice president in charge came down. I know Roberta Jacobson, who I, I've known for a long time, is probably the only qualified person to lead this effort. She's uh, resigning. Mayorkas, the secretary, came down to the RGV, the busiest sector, and only stayed in the hangar of the air. He never left the hangar of the airport. He never opened it up to the press. They've got to take this seriously. I've got some good uh, constructive advice for them how to fix it, uh, but they're not doing a good job right now. To the issue of the Supreme Court, President Biden signing executive action, calling her for a commission to study the makeup of the United States Supreme Court. Your thoughts, sir? Well, I think the, the president should listen to the former Senator Joe Biden, who was against this. You know, FDR tried to pack the court. His own Democrat-run Judiciary Committee in the 30s said it was a dangerous precedent. It was blatantly unconstitutional. I think this is nothing more than a political power grab. And, and I'm a member of the Supreme Court bar needs to be based on legal principles, not based on politics. I think it's going to be utterly rejected by uh, the Congress, um, and they should withdraw this. We've heard President Biden since Inauguration Day call for unity. Does this only further drive the tension in this town? Oh, 100 percent have packed the Supreme Court in a political power grab. The largest spending bill on COVID that was not COVID related, uh, that was not bipartisan like the previous ones. Now we're going into an infrastructure uh, massive tax increase bill that I don't see how that can be bipartisan. Uh, I don't think he's off to a very good start. I think the president in his heart of hearts wants to be bipartisan, but there are driving factors in his administration that will not allow him to be. Your leader, Kevin McCarthy, reports raising more than $27 million in the first quarter of this year. The House Republican Campaign Committee reports raising more than $30 million. Are President Biden's policies driving Republican fundraising? Oh, 100 percent. I'm seeing it on the ground. I, I predict we will retake the House, fire Nancy Pelosi, get the majority back. Because already, just within months, Mike, look at what we're facing, an open border a crisis we've never seen before, uh, worse than 2014 and 2019. A massive tax increase on the horizon, cuts in our military. Everything that I ran as a Republican on are being completely rejected. And I don't think the, the mainstream America is with this you know, idea. I think they're going to reject it soundly. Elections do have consequences, and there will be consequences in the midterm elections. So you're confident Republicans will take back the House next year, sir? Well, you know, there's already a very narrow gap uh, between uh, the majority and the minority. We only have to pick up a couple. Remember, uh, 20 of these Democrats are in trump Kerry districts. I don't see how they can have this kind of voting record and survive the midterm elections. And historically, uh, the party that's not in the White House will, will gain seats in the midterm elections. I'm counting on history, but also the failures of this administration to drive us forward to a majority uh, in the next election cycle. Congressman Michael McCall, the great state of Texas, thanks so much for your time.